What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk to you about some of the ways I save space and money while packing for trips. So stay tuned. So before we get started, if you like watching my videos and learning a little bit about my sport and how I've survived in it for so many years, please subscribe and let me know what kind of content you like seeing by thumbs upping any of the videos that you like and I will keep making more of those kinds of videos. So let's... Alright, so one of the first things I want to mention because I see so many people either not doing this or doing this wrong is lock. So, if you travel with firearms in the U.S., you have to have a hard-sided case for the firearm, and it has to be locked. Well, I see a lot of people using TSA locks on their rifle case, and a TSA lock has this little symbol on it right there, that red one. And that means that TSA has a master key that can get into this lock. And so, if you put these types of locks on your firearms case, that means that TSA can open it. And the whole point is that only you can open your case. So you need to have non-TSA locks. I personally like these master locks that are keyed. I uh, have them keyed to the same. Nice thing about master locks is once you find the lock that fits your hasp um, on your case. You can actually order multiples with the same key from Master Lock themselves. You don't have to like go digging through the store to find them. You can just order them straight from them. So I have a couple of sets of these all keyed to the same key so that it's not, I'm not having to like figure out which key goes to what. So I like these. They fit perfectly. They don't spin and I haven't lost a Master Lock yet. I've had some cheaper locks that I have lost through the airport before, but so far I've had this set of locks for like five or six years and they still work great and have not gotten knocked off yet. I do use these small like cable TSA locks for my gear bag, however, and you really should also secure your gear bag because you don't want it to, one, accidentally come open and two, for anyone to really have access to it, um, which, you know, sometimes happens in airport settings or maybe you leave your gear bag at the range overnight, that kind of thing. You don't want people digging through your stuff, so definitely lock your gear bag um, any way you can. My particular bags all have the little lock feature so that you can slip a cable lock like this through it. So I use a combination of the TSA locks and non-TSA locks when I travel. So just make sure you use the appropriate lock depending on your situation. So when I travel, I am kind of a cheapskate. I do not want to pay overage charges ever. So I make sure that my weights are always under 50 pounds. And for rifle cases, normally they don't check dimensions on those because my large case is over the 72 in linear inch measurement maximum. But they usually, I've never had them check that and I've never paid overage using that case before. I use my short case when I have one rifle and it's just so much easier to travel with. But I always like put as much as I can in my rifle case uh, so that I can get some weight out of my gear bag because my gear bag can easily be over 50 pounds. And I also use the smallest gear bag that I can to fit everything in there. I have a larger bag that I use for like local practice or if I'm driving to a match because I can just like literally throw everything in. It doesn't have to be packed any particular way, everything just fits. Whereas my travel bag, everything is, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Everything has to go in a specific place in order to fit. So I can't just throw everything in there, but it is lighter and I can come in under weight. The nice thing is when I travel with just one gun or if I'm just traveling air rifle mainly, I can put some other stuff in my gear bag. So I'll throw some clothes and stuff in there so I don't have to have a second carry on. When I travel with both small war and air, I can never put any clothes in my checked bag. I always have to put all my clothes into a carry on. So I end up taking a personal 
personal item which is my backpack with stuff in it and then my duffel bag with all of my clothes for however long the match is. Alright so let's start off with the gear bag. First off I never store anything in the front pockets because I don't lock those so if I put anything in there it's not it's just like a shirt or something because I forgot to pack it. So this particular bag has a mesh separator with there's a mesh pocket here as well and I find this useful if I'm just shooting air I can actually fit everything inside this mesh zipper so my policy on packing is if for some reason the zipper failed on the outside how much stuff would go flying so it's nice to have this extra divider so that if this main zipper did break um, everything would still be zipped up inside. So then I also use these clip holders as well to keep everything secured and I'm able to put my jacket and my pants on the top to keep them flat. Uh, this trip because it was only air I was able to put some of my clothes in here as well. And then I just have my uh, sight box my boots which for some of the smaller stuff like my glove and headband and the top part of my offhand stand I stick those inside my boots so that if like I say if for some reason either TSA opens my bag and searches it or a zipper fails everything it has at least something at least kind of securely into and then offhand stand and for this trip I put my air cylinder with my offhand stand. So pretty straightforward there. I did put a couple of things in the top zipper pockets as well. Uh, these are the locks that I just took off my rifle case. Um, I use master locks with the same key so I'm not having to deal with two keys but when they're not on my case I'll usually just throw them in my gear bag so that I know where they're at. Extra set of Allen keys and then just a few more clothes up here along with like the other half of my offhand stand and a couple extra CBIs. So that's how I pack my gear bag for air rifle. Alright, so for rifle cases, this is the Pelican 1700. I have this short case. I can put either my air rifle broken apart into it or my small bore. I cannot put both guns in the same case on this one, but it's really convenient when only traveling with one. It's way easier to deal with this size case over the big 1720. So I only put two locks on it, one at each end here and here, and that works out just fine. You're not able to pry it open, so I don't even use all four of the hasp. So inside my case, I have broken down my air rifle pretty extensively to get it to fit in here. I have done cutouts for pretty much everything. Um, this was a partial cutout as you can see. I had to cut through all the way where the rifle is. But the whole point of doing the cutouts is so you don't put extra pressure on the case itself. If you just laid your rifle in here without cutting out any of the foam, you're going to put a lot of pressure on the hinges as well as the locks. And eventually you'll break your hinges. So, um... Like I said, I broke it pretty extensively. I ended up taking the tube off my rifle. Um, I put a set of Allen wrenches and then my cheat piece off my grip assembly. And the couple of screws I had to take out for the tube and the loading lever, I put in a Ziploc bag in, at the trigger guard so it's less likely to get lost. I wouldn't just lay it in here, especially because you have to open it up for TSA normally. You don't want it to just go blowing away, especially if it only has a couple of screws in it. So keep make sure you keep them in a bag and you keep that bag tucked in a place so that it doesn't get lost. Let's 
so it's really convenient the way my rifle breaks apart at the butt end so I can just have this assembly and then just take off the tube so that is how I ended up cutting out my rifle case for my air rifle so thank you for watching if you like what you see please subscribe and like this video and have a great rest of your night